Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Alright, so I'm going away to do some songwriting over the next two weeks, but I wanted to leave you with an update on the isotonic exercise. I have upgraded it to what I now call the isotonal collider exercise. To me, this whole thing feels kind of like a physics experiment in melody. So I wanted to update you on what all I've been doing. And if you all want to try this yourself, I'll give you a very specific step-by-step -step guideline for how to do that. Uh, so the first thing is you need to make sure, okay, you've got your guitar dialed in a little bit. I mean, I took a couple of sessions to put my rig together, just kind of make sure that, you know, I had some phrasing, but you want to make sure that your clean guitar sounds good because this is going to start to really go into some advanced melodic territory. And if your just basic sound and your phrasing isn't great on something basic, I think you're going to basically get garbage in, garbage out. So make sure you, okay, you've just got a basic sound dialed in. You've got a rig you're comfortable with. I'll show you my looping rig here in a second, but it's simple. It's simple, but I think it sounds pretty good. So that's step one. Step two, you want to make sure that you've kind of, you've got some chord scale relationships under your bucket. You want to make, bucket, I don't know what that means, but you want to make sure that you can kind of solo a little bit over chord changes. You know, you want to you know, make sure you... Are changing, you need to be able to follow them a little bit and you know, play some phrases like that that make sense. You don't want to have someone like, play a bunch of chord changes and you just play scales or random stuff. So you want to make sure that you at least know a bit about how to do chord scale relationships and you can solo over changes. If you're at that point, okay, now you're ready for this. The next step, learn some scale boxes. A lot of you know these already and again, you can do really cool stuff with this with just the pentatonic boxes. So if you know those already, you're in good shape. Um, if you want to do that, like this is a really good way to kind of just learn rock guitar phrasing. So I recommend pretty much everyone learn the pentatonic scales and also learn uh, the diatonic scales or in the major scales. Now, recently for me, I added the harmonic and melodic minor scales and some really, really juicy stuff falls out of that. So if you want to get more advanced going into those, again, I included um, a tab that I made of how to do the isotonic exercise for the harmonic and melodic minor scale. So you can use the link below to get to my website to get the tabs for that. It's all free stuff. Um, but okay, so yeah, you want to pick what scales you want to work with. Okay, that's good. The next step is you're going to make a drone. I am going to make one out of a looper. And again, it's like, I, I tend, you want to use an ambient drone at first. It doesn't have a rhythm to it. And it should be just, a, a, we're going to do this in the key of A, probably the easiest. You, it's, the drone should only have A and E in it. That's it. Dead simple, root fifth. So I'm going to play my AE drone. I'm going to make it here. Let's make it a little quieter. And here we go. Here we go. Boom. I'm just using an RC2 simple looper. One track. And I kind of like to sort of pick semi-randomly because I don't want... I, I don't want any rhythm. I want it to be open. Again, I'm using the open fifth string, seventh fret of the fourth string, Ninth fret of the third string and the tenth fret of the second string. And I basically get this open power chord. And boom. Look. I got this nice little drone on my RC2. I'm also using an AB pedal, I'll show you guys in a minute. That lets me switch my when I switch to the other channel on my amp, it's louder. So automatically my loop is gonna be below my soloing level. Really useful basic thing. So A B pedal, looper, super helpful. Okay. So, that's, so once you've got that drone made, you're going to start playing all the boxes that you used to stack this way, all starting on A. So I'll do the pentatonics first to do them pretty quick. Minor pentatonic, no big deal. Major pentatonic, box two. No big deal. Kind of a cool change, but no big deal. Okay, this one. A lot of you won't have heard this before. Um, they use this for rag meg in Indian music, but... So that, you see, these are where it starts to get really fun for me. It's like, that just sounds different to me, which I like. Uh, and the other two are going to sound different. It's a box four. Okay, so 
but all you can hear, those sound different. And so already you can take that idea and start trying to put those pentatonic boxes with other chords that you use, and I'll give you some more detail about how to do that in a little bit, but that's the first thing. And then if you do the major scales, it starts to get, you know... Now the box two, Dorian. So I could go on and on and on. Uh, it takes a little while to get through all these, but I mean, for me, I really just thought of it like drilling a tunnel. I really like this drilling a tunnel analogy, where you imagine that you kind of know what the sound is supposed to be like, but you, um, well, I, well, actually, with, with this, this is the trick. When you're doing a scale, you know. When I was building the harmonic minor scale, which is a lot more challenging, like this, you know that sound. So you can go to the other positions, and your ears can just look for the sound of those notes and build the scale a little at a time. But if I take one of those boxes, if I take the second harmonic minor box and I move it down here, it sounds kind of weird. So the first thing I do is I transpose by feel, by feel, by appearance. So let's just say I've built the harmonic minor grid already. I already know box one, et cetera, et cetera. I know box two. I just kind of know that by shape. What I do is I try to feel it down here. And a lot of times you'll struggle with that at first, but you can always go back here. And you can hear that harmonic minor sound. And then just focus on getting those finger patterns down and then keep transposing them and let that teach you the sound. So that's the first step there. I mean, for me, it took me, well, I spent maybe 10 hours of practice in the practice room before this was comfortable for me. Some people might take longer because I had a lot of kind of ear training with me, but a lot of these modes were very new for me. And so a lot of what I found is I started with this process of finding the shape, but using the scale that I knew, like hearing the harmonic minor scale and just building all the grids and just kind of using my fingers. If my note was in the wrong place, I just moved my finger until I knew the grids up and down. And I started moving them here, and at first my ear would be disoriented, but then I would eventually just like force my fingers to always go along the same path. And once I got really good at just feeling the right finger patterns, memorizing the finger patterns, then I'd do another step. This is where it starts to open up musically. This is where the cool musical stuff starts to come in. So what I would do is I would name the solfege syllables. I would go through something like that second harmonic minor box, and so the scale that that comes out in is, it's what's called Locrian sharp six. It doesn't show up in a lot of stuff. I've never seen that in any kind of music that I've been able to detect it in. Um, so it's kind of a weird mode, but I really wanted to try to hear it, just to just get into it. So I'd go to the syllables, I knew the, I knew the finger shapes, I'd follow them one at a time. So this is Do, Do, Ra, it's flat two, Me is flat three, Fa is natural four, Se is flat five, La is six, Te is seven, Do. So for those who don't know solfege, you can go one, one, flat two, flat three, four, flat five, natural six, flat seven, one. You can do something like that. And once you get to hear this first octave, you can try to get the first octave in your ear. octave until you start to hear what it sounds like with the drum, until it sort of sticks. It might take a second, but it'll stick eventually. And then you start to try to do the second octave, but you try to do it by ear, like the other one. You see, now I'm able to do it because it took me a little bit of time to go over that, but once I went over it five or six times, it started to stick, and then it started to feel like, not like a transposition of the harmonic minor scale. It started to feel like its own scale with its own unique sound, which is what I was really after. So you do that with as many scales as you want to do, even the really weird ones. Um, the, the one, the a couple of transpositions, the uh, melodic minor two that I just love to death, like the seventh mode of melodic minor, the altered scale. That one's kind of weird to hear because you have you have a flat four. You have do, ra, me, fa, or I don't even know. I don't know what fa flat is. I never had to do fa flat. But this is not, this note is normally 
a major third above the root. But it's really a flat four, which I've honestly never seen in, in any kind of music except music that uses the scale. So, so you have to learn how to hear it. That note is a flat four. To try to hear that as a flat four it took me a little bit of time, but now that I've done it a bit and I've just I've just kind of screwed around with it, eventually my ear was like, okay, let me not try to make this a major third, you know, and that that will come as you as you play through it more. So you got to trust, you got to keep drilling into it. And again, that's where the really, really juicy stuff comes out. I've been starting. So the next idea that naturally falls out of that is to start taking notes. Is to start taking notes on little ideas that happen. Because as you explore these new territories, you're going to hit things where you're like, that sounds kind of cool. I didn't mean to do that, but that was pretty cool. And this is like a very precious time. Like whenever you're first learning something new, a lot of really happy accidents occur. And I mean, some of them are just like, you know, cool things that just like other people don't discover, but kind of work. But also something that is just like where you are in this new phase of discovery is like you develop an attachment. You see things in it that other people aren't going to see, but you learn how to like these kind of new sounds in a way that's unique to you. And this is a way that you build your own voice through the discovery process. So this is one of the really, really juicy parts of doing this is you don't want to just gloss over this phase and try to get it technically. Getting it technically doesn't have a lot of value uh, because if you want to just do that, you, it'd be easier just to copy music that's already done with this type of, uh, with these types of scales. Where you get something really valuable is where you accidentally hit things where you're like, that sounds pretty cool, I kind of like that, I don't think anyone's ever done it before, and you write it down. And it's usually short, short little riffs, two notes, four notes, six notes, eight notes, not a lot, but that you discover that you enjoy and as you kind of accumulate a couple of these, you, we'll, we'll work on bringing them back later and building them up into other things. So I just take little audio notes. Usually I either like put my little, um, uh, my little audio recorder app or I'll take like a 10 second video on my phone and I put them all in a cloud folder in my Google Drive and I've been going back and looking over them and I'll like make notes of like this one's from Super Locrian. It's a lick from Super Locrian. I'll, I'll number them. I'll categorize them a little bit, but mostly I'll just be like, all right, these are just things. And it, what you'll see is we'll bring those back later and we'll use those to build later stages of the creative process with this exercise. So don't pass those over because those are your opportunity to create your own unique sound. Because the things that you like, other people might not like initially, but you might be able to show them how to like them. So use those moments, they're valuable. So the next part that happens as you start to get comfortable with the scales, you add another layer. The next layer that you add is what I call a, t a tonal gravity contact improvisation. The, the really the simple thing is this is a very basic tension and release exercise. So I have this fifth drone. I could put a third in there if I was focusing in on one scale, but I'm not gonna right now. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna leave it kind of open. So I'm gonna leave just the root and the fifth in there. And I'm gonna start playing with each of these scales. And I'm gonna take a very simple idea. It's a very important, very simple idea. The idea is that the tonic triad of each scale, so the chord that you make starting with the A note, is going gonna, is gonna to form a resting note, a triad, a resting space. So if I'm in the first minor pentatonic, the tonic triad, the A, C, E, the, a, the notes of the A minor chord, those are resting notes. So when you want to rest, you land on those notes. When you want tension, when you want to create activity, you rest on the other notes. And some of you are very familiar with this feeling already, but for those of you who are not, it's a very simple exercise to get used to it. What you're going to do, you're going to start improvising, and there's going to be a very simple formula. You're going to play a bunch of notes, and you're going to land on a resting note. So A, C, or E, if you're in A minor pentatonic. Then you're going to make up a bunch of other notes, and you're going to rest on a non-resting note, which is going to be D or G. Only five notes, so let me show you what this looks like a little bit. Again, don't worry so much about what you play. You want to play a bunch of random stuff, rest on an active note. Random stuff, rest on a resting note. Here we go. Starting by resting on this resting note. Random stuff. On an active note. Resting note. More stuff. Between 
resting on a resting note and resting on an active note gives you a very clear sense of tension and release within that scale and how it can work. And so, like, and you can do this with any scale. And also, if, and if you get into a scale that's really funky, like if you do the altered scale, it's gonna be one, flat two, flat three, flat, uh, flat four, flat five, flat six, flat seven, everything's flat, it's super flat. And you have the one in the flat three, but you don't have a flat five. So you really, you're more limited in your options, but you have to use that, you have to work with that. And later on, if you want to, you can add the perfect fifth in there as a resting note, but for now, work with the scale you have. And if, you, and if the only note you have in the scale, if you don't have a fifth or a third, you know, that, that could happen in different scales. You can always rest on the tonic. But it's like, it's getting used to what it feels like to rest on those different notes. And just arbitrarily, bunch of notes, resting note. Bunch of notes, active note. Bunch of notes, resting note. You will get a sense of how tension and release works in this new scale. And you'll also come up with some pretty cool things, so take your notes. Once you've kind of gotten a sense of the tension and release profile in the scale you want to do, what you can do is you can really start to get more specific to how that scale works. Because, I mean, sometimes this, this root fifth drone, it doesn't work great for everything. It's a good place to start, but it really doesn't open up a lot of the nuances of what's possible. And again, you're, you're not always playing over power chords in real music. Sometimes you want to discover some other things. So what I like to do, there's this idea in Indian music called Vadi and Somebody, and I call this Vadi Somebody Mathematics. It's a thing I started doing pretty recently. So what you have, in, in, in ragas is you have a scale, but you also have a focus on certain notes. And th the focus on those notes is what makes the ragas in a lot of ways act differently. It's like you can have a minor pentatonic scale, but you know, you could have uh, something where you always rest on the resting notes. It's very kind of straight sounding, whereas if you focus on the the, uh, the unactive notes, if those are your main notes, see if see it feels much more unstable if I focus on those active notes in the melody. So the idea is that you can do that with any scale you want. So I'm gonna use a slightly extreme example, but this will give you an idea, is that what you can do is you, you, I want you to look at the scale you have, and I want you to make up a drone. Now your drone, um, usually what I do when I make up a drone is I steal an idea from a song that I like, uh, or a song that I'm doing, um, or, or you can just make up any pattern, but you wanna pick some kind of right hand pattern. The simplest thing is to steal from a song that you already know. So one that I came up with, um, I didn't steal this one from a, from a particular song, but it was just like, it was a very simple picking pattern. I was in open D tuning, and what I did to try to make the Locrian scale work is I went to, I went to Dad Gad tuning. But I wanted to try to figure out a way to make the Locrian stable, the Locrian scale stable. And the Locrian is not stable because it has a flat fifth in it, which really destabilizes it. So I thought, well, what if the focus is not on the fifth? And so I made up a drone that goes like this. Uh, there we go. And it repeats that pattern. I just arpeggiate up, dead simple. drone has three notes in it. It has the flat six, the flat seven, and the root in it. And, it's, and it has this melody going flat six, flat seven, one, flat seven. It just goes up and down. So it really puts those notes in your area of focus. So if I record that, I'll show you what that sounds like. If I go ooh, B setting. This is a great Locrian drone. This makes the Locrian actually sound like a doable thing because it's not throwing that flat five in your face. The flat five will be there, you'll see, but it's not in your face.
because I, I use the drone to kind of focus on other things other than the flat five. And now you can do this with anything. So um, let's go to a pentatonic scale that's maybe something a little friendlier. So, so I told you that's that third mode of the pentatonic scale I'm really digging on because it's not quite major, it's not quite minor, it doesn't have a third. Two of the pentatonic modes don't even have a third in them. They have a root, a major second, a perfect fourth and a perfect fifth, but no third. So they're neither major nor minor in that sense. So what we're going to do, we're going to stabilize them. And to me, this is a dead simple thing you can do with any scale. What you can do is you can use your open A string. And you can just pick any other notes of a scale that you like and just basically make them into a chord. Just put them somewhere anywhere and play any pattern over them and see what you get. So one that I really like, I really like this A minor 11 voicing. So this A minor 11 voicing has a G, it has A, G, C, and D in it. I'm not going to put an E in there and you're going to see why. Because I actually want to do, I want to do the fourth mode of the pentatonic scale. And the fourth mode of the pentatonic scale, it has, it, it does have the third in it, but it doesn't have the fifth in it. So if I use this idea, if I... Is a, a very different way of stabilizing a scale. It has root, third, fourth, flat six. There's no fifth in there. That's not in there. But so I used a chord that doesn't have the E in it. It has a G, which is the flat seven, the C, which is the third, the D, which is the fourth, but no E. So then that thing, which it's gonna tend to want to sound like D minor pentatonic, that, because that's what that scale is. It's a D minor pentatonic scale, but I use a different chord to stabilize it, but to give it a totally different feel. So you can do this with really anything. If you can, and, and again, it's like, you don't necessarily have to use notes in the scale. So, I mean, if I did that exact same thing, but this time I did add the E back in there. Let's see if I, well, let's give myself another drum. But now I'm gonna kind of, I'll make a more finger picky drum this time, but I'll put the E in there this time. way to add a different flavor to stuff. Again, you don't have to use things that are in a particular scale, but see, the, the thing about this is this is initially challenging for all of us because we're going to start hearing things we're not used to. And initially that's a little scary, but what you want to do is really push through that and just try to try to sit with new stuff. Because when you, get, you don't have to look far to find new stuff using this technique. It's really easy. 
Um, but, but a lot of it's going to feel new, and a lot of it you're not going to like right away. Some of it you will. Um, but again, you don't have to do like all the possible modes or all the possible scales or all the possible chords. Like you could explore this forever and take ideas from this and figure out, oh, that was a, like I found this really cool thing that went over a D7 chord with a Lydian scale. Let me take that back into my playing and try to make something different. Uh, you can do little pieces of this. And honestly, if you did, if you found four chords that you liked over different types of scales and you found a way to bring that back into your playing, you would probably sound like super duper exotic to most people. Like super exotic to most people because you would be using sounds they've never heard before. Even if it's just a few. Even if people hear one sound they've never heard before, they're usually like, whoa, dude, what's he doing? You do the same phrase again and again. Even if it's just... Even if it's just a little bit different than what people have heard. If they like it, if you phrase it nicely, I think there's hope that it could really change what you've got coming out of it. So try to sit with some different stuff and make some different things. And again, if you if you were always recycling ideas that you come up with that are new back into your practice, then, I mean, you can just... What you can do with this is ridiculous. I mean, I'm just, I'm just starting to scratch the surface with it and really, really liking it. Like, I, I mean, I hope to keep opening the box on these things over the next couple of months as I do more. Uh, but it, but I, just, I just wanted to share where I am so far with this. So I hope you all find it interesting, find it useful. Um, Y'all, give this a try. Let me know what you're coming up with with it. I'm very curious as to what other people can do with it or where you struggle. Again, it took me about 10 hours of just like practicing to get to the point where I could do all this stuff with the looper. Like I had to... I had to dial in my rig a bit. I had to, you know, figure out how to just piece the exercise together, how to how to kind of flow from one section of another in a way that works for me. I had to really like listen to all these new kind of syllables and scale sounds that I wasn't used to. But once I got through all those things, you know, I, I'm just I'm just starting to get into the territory where this like this gives unlimited cool new stuff to me. And the thing is, you, you don't have to take everything that you find. You find the stuff that you like that's unique, and then it's like now you've really added something. This is a really easy way to add something new to the music that you're in. So, yeah, I mean, I hope you all find this useful and that you can implement it. Shoot me comments if you're having ideas or problems with anything. And, uh, yeah, let's leave it at that for now. And I'll probably see you all in a couple of weeks. So, peace.